Well, the time has come to address the interior of the newly acquired hot rod. And what better place to start than to remove the old Indian blanket upholstered uh, seats. I don't know if these are from a movie theater or, or like an airplane or what. These bottom cushions come out. Um, also, I took off the material covering the door panels. And look at the seat belts I found behind the seats. These are like something you'd use, I don't know, on a B-52, I guess. I don't know. It looks like aircraft stuff to me. Super heavy duty. Real snazzy hardware. Okay, I'm not going to use them because they're just too big and bulky, but uh, I really thought they were neat looking. And very typically rat rod style. Sort of like Mad Max. So... Say goodbye to the Indian blanket seats and door panels, and let's see what the new look is. One amusing observation is I'm pulling this uh, Indian blanket away from the masonite panel. They used a cotton uh, material to kind of pad the Indian blanket, and as I'm pulling it off, this reminds me of Santa Claus's chest. I had decided to go with some handmade bomber style aluminum seats that will pivot forward. Uh, I put in some high density foam in the bottom and then got some nice black uh, diamond tufted uh, seat cushions and uh, welded up some brackets here that uh, go in. There's a reinforcing rod that goes under this part of the uh, front of the seat so that it can't droop from weight. That gives me, well the old seats were like up here and, and I almost couldn't get my feet in. This gives me an extra like six or seven inches of foot room and just makes the car a whole lot more comfortable to drive. Then as far as the Indian blanket door panel, I haven't done this one yet, but I've done the one on the other side. And I got some material that's a ribbed vinyl that I hope will stay glued to the masonite panel. Um, sometimes vinyl is a little tricky in that regard. Let me go over and open the door and give you a close look at it. Now the hardware is not the best. Uh, I can look on eBay and maybe spruce that up a bit. The window roller is not, not too bad. It needs one of those round escutcheon plates here and this is just kind of ratty looking. But you can see how that nice kind of pinstripe vinyl, I think it looks great. It goes really well with the rest of the black interior. Nice little dash in this. Um, and that big old, I don't know what that is, Pontiac or Oldsmobile steering wheel, but it really gives you some leverage. It's like steering a yacht. Uh, I kind of like it, actually. I really like the look of it, but it actually works well. Okay, so that's the interior. Uh, it turns out that under this seat, there was a battery compartment which I have covered with um, both plywood and black carpet. You can see the edge here of it. And then there's a little stowage compartment under the other seat. Also, as if that weren't enough, there's a 350 watt Kenwood stereo system built into this. Believe, I, it's just incredible. There are speakers up here in the kick panels and from what I understand they're very high quality and this system probably sounds wonderful. Uh, we'll find out. At the moment I have no input uh, system for the stereo. Uh, it had a line out that you would plug in uh, like a, a smartphone and play your downloaded tunes through it and I'm thinking maybe get a CD player or something like that put it under the seat and uh, feed it that way but uh, that's all down the road a bit okay so that's the new look and I hope you like it and now for a little update on the interior of the 34 Ford uh, as you can see I got brand new chromed handles with the escutcheon plates and I also installed uh, armrests on both sides mainly so that you could pull the door shut when the window was rolled up. 
Okay, I found out the hard way you get in with the window rolled up and there's really nothing to hold on to unless you want to break this handle off. Okay, so that's uh, one improvement. Second, I install retracting seat belts for both the driver and the passenger. I also installed a drink holder here for my 44 ounce Big Gulp while I'm out cruising. That was uh, obtained on eBay as were the seat belts and I bought a little inexpensive CD player uh, that fits under the seat so I can play CDs through the uh, car stereo system. To be honest I rarely do it because with the exhaust um, being as noisy as they are you really can't hear the music all that well and the exhaust itself is probably the best music possible. I installed a um, little plate here for three toggle switches for the magneto fuel pump and the electric fan and also a uh, turn signal control so that uh, both front and back turn signals work just fine. For a rear view mirror I got a really nice beveled glass antique rear view mirror which is installed uh, on the, uh, just above the windshield where they always are and also I reached up here behind this header and found this kids little robot toy and I guess it's supposed to bring good luck or something didn't bring much luck to the robot but uh, I'm leaving it up there okay just like a little mascot and as a nice final touch I got an eight ball gear shift knob. The next job is to replace this radiator. Uh, the 64-65 Ford Mustang radiators fit perfectly in these grill shells. Uh, in this case this one was installed crooked and when they ran the little plastic uh, rod through to hold the fan they damaged uh, one of the little tubules so that the radiator leaks. Uh, and I've got a, this is a two, uh, whatever, two core, I've got a three-way core aluminum radiator I'm going to replace it with. Step one will be to remove the grill shell, then this kind of hideous bottle. I've got a really nice polished aluminum overflow tank, and then we can uh, drain the radiator and uh, remove it. Well, like any job like this, nothing ever goes the way you expect. It's like a Chinese puzzle trying to get all this apart. The grill shell wouldn't lift as long as the fan was in place. The fan couldn't be removed unless the radiator was removed. So all in all, everything had to be loosened and jostled and maneuvered, and now it's out. And notice how these uprights that support the radiator, this one seems to be tilted back or this one seems to be tilted forward. I've got to figure out which one's right and then make the other one like it. You can see where the sloppy uh, fan installation resulted in all kinds of damage to the fins and tubules here in the, in the radiator and this is a fairly new radiator and it's just ruined because of uh, very foolish uh, incompetent fan installation. Okay, so what a shame. At least we got a brand new one here ready to install and with the fan in properly, hopefully. Well, it's pretty obvious which radiator support is correct. Notice this one is vertical, whereas this one is way off. You see the bubble. So I'm going to find a way to bend this one and reshape it so that it's exactly parallel with this one. Now because this angle iron is just too stout to be bent, uh, I'm going to have to cut a little line right here so that then this piece of metal, the front one, can bend forward so that this piece is uh, vertical like the other one. And then once I get it there, I will weld that pie cut so that once again it's a good stout piece of angle iron. Well, after using a great big piece of square tubing for leverage and two C-clamps to hold it to the angle iron, I managed to get the bubble perfectly centered. Okay, now I'm going to have to uh, weld in that pie cut, and then this uh, angle iron will be exactly parallel with this one and just as strong. Okay, now you see that pie cut. Now you don't. 
you want to see something really beautiful, look at these new aluminum radiators that you can get on eBay for, this one is around a hundred dollars, it's a Mustang radiator, and uh, you can see the polished tanks, it's all TIG welded, it's not glued together, uh, these things are gems, and they're good for like probably 15 or 20 degrees cooler uh, running on your car. So actually too nice to put in a car, it needs to be somewhere on display in your living room. Well, I've got the radiator installed, and uh, now it is perfectly parallel to the front axle, unlike it was before. And I've installed the fan in a completely different way. You notice this flat here. Well, there's a flat at the bottom, and the tank here is supporting the weight of the fan. And then instead of using those plastic rods that go through the veins of the radiator and destroy it, like that black one that I removed, uh, I've made uh, steel clamps on either side here with uh, carriage bolts that fit into slots in the fan body. And now the fan is attached and absolutely immobile and is just barely touching the surface of the radiator. So this is going to work, I think, a whole lot better. Now it's time to put the radiator shell on. And if you remember, I had a terrible time getting all this apart said it was like a Chinese puzzle, but when I looked real closely while I was putting it back together, all I had to do was cut a notch out of here to clear the motor of the fan, and the whole thing will just slip together in a matter of a few seconds. And here's the finished view. As you can see, the aluminum radiator now fits completely within the grill shell. It's not protruding out the back. Uh, and here is that overflow tank. I had to fabricate a steel bracket for it that mounts it securely to the uh, radiator uh, aluminum housing so that it can't drift over and uh, get into the fan blades, which would be rather unpleasant. Okay, so that's the final product, and I think it's going to not only look a lot better, but work a lot better.